Hi all of friends, this is Arul from our society channel. Today we are going to see the basic civil engineering questions and answers as a part one video related to building maintenance and services. This video is not only for civil engineers but it exclusively for facility engineers who are taking care of electrical and mechanical services because in lot of sites there will be not a civil engineer. Definitely the facility engineers have to take care of all the engineering maintenance related activities. So this video will be definitely useful for them. Okay. Also, I wish to say that already I have uploaded more than 100 technical videos related to electrical and mechanical maintenance. You can check that in my Our Society channel playlist is Electromechanical Services. Already uploaded technical videos is presented in English but explained in Tamil. But this video is fully explained in English only. So it is basically a question and answer type. So kindly support me and motivate me to upload further videos. Thank you. Let's go to the video. So the first question you want to know is how many types of cracks can occur in a building because this is the major issue we have been facing in maintenance. Okay, so there will be a two types of cracks that can occur in buildings. First one is non-moving cracks are the result of shrinkage and are usually shallow. The second one is moving cracks are caused due to excessive stress in concrete and generally are wider than 1 mm. Okay, the second question is what is meant by creep? and how it is formed in concrete structure. Creep is small deformation that is formed due to loading on concrete. It is a slow time dependent process. An increase in temperature and decrease in humidity can cause this creep. Okay. The third one is how to control corrosion in steel bars in building. If the concrete is less permeable, then there is less chance of moisture chemical absorption which leads to corrosion of steel bars okay the fourth question is what is the main reason for cracks in masonry joints the main reason for cracks in masonry joint is due to the presence of sulfate contact which needs to be checked it attacks the mortar and weakens it leading to development of cracks they appear after two three years of construction okay the next question is how shear cracks between the main wall and cross wall can be corrected. Normally, the crack develops in the place where the main and cross wall joins. Okay, it is due to poor bonding between walls. Bonding can be increased by two things where a projection of brick is done into the other wall, interlocking it. Okay. The next major issue we are facing in building is termite issue. Okay. So in order to understand what are the basic details is given in IS code for this anti-termite treatment. So in IS 6313 part 1 and part 2 specify the procedure for anti-termite treatment. Termite attacks wood, plastic, leather and rubber. So to protect components containing this anti-termite protection is to be given. Okay. The next one is what is the cause of leaks in the pitched roof? There will be three reasons for the cause of leaks in the flat roofs. First one is improper slopes, second one is unfinished roof and wall junction, third one is depression on top of roof. But for pitched roof, weather effects like heavy wind, storm, rain can alter the roof structure and cause leakage. Okay. So next question is, what is the concentration of chemicals used for anti-termite proofing? So the anti-termite chemicals in water emulsion can be any of aldrin, Heptachla and Chlordin. So, Aldrin and Heptachla have concentration by weight of 0.5 percentage and Chlordin of 1 percentage. Okay. The next question is What is reinforced cement concrete? This is a basic civil engineering question. Okay. Answer is reinforced cement concrete or RCC is a material with the composed unit of strong ductile and high tensile substance such as steel combined with the rigidity of cement to enhance its elasticity and tensile strength. 
The next question is what is the nominal concrete proportion for different grades? The grade wise concrete proportion is M10 equal to 1 is to 3 is to 4, M15 equal to 1 is to 2 is to 4, M20 equal to 1 is to 1.5 is to 3 and M25 equal to 1 is to 1 is to 2. But for M30 it is 1 is to 1 is to 1. Where M of N is the grade, N is the compressive strength measured in Newton bar millimeter square and the ratio represents the proportion of cement with the fine aggregate and coarse aggregate. Okay. The next question is which IS codes gives details about elevators? This IS 14665 gives specification for elevators. Okay. It gives the number, capacity of elevator depending upon floor area and number of floors to be served. Okay. The next question is what is the requirement of slope in buildings? Ramps are provided in buildings to allow easy passage for elderly and physically challenged occupants. The slope should not be too steep. It should not be more than 1 in 15. Okay. The next question is how many types of ventilation are there in buildings? There are three types. First one is natural, differential temperature of air. Okay. Second one is mechanical through fans. Third one is hybrid or mixed mode ventilation. That is a design of a building. Okay. So, the next question is, will a fire detector detect the light produced by fire? A fire detector can detect three characteristics of fire radiation. That is flame, heat and smoke. But it cannot detect the light produced by fire. Understand? The next question is, when exposed to fire, why concrete becomes weak? Concrete decomposes when exposed to heat. Okay. Water operates. Sand, gravel become molten lava like. Up to 200 degree centigrade, no changes are noticed. At about 600 degree centigrade, significant loss occurs. At 800 to 1000 degree centigrade, it completely gives in. Okay. The next question is, while calculating the handling capacity of lift, what is the weight of person is taken? Okay, this is also one of the basic question we should know. Lifts can carry people from a range of just 4 to 20 number. To decide this, the weight of each person is to be considered. It is assumed as 68 kgs has an average for one person. Okay. So, we came to the end of this video. If this video, if you find it is useful, please press the like button and subscribe it and also share to your friends. Okay. Thank you.